welcome to One on One with IMT Philip. Today we have Adam Brooker from Move. He's the manager and director of Move. So, Adam, you moved in 2016, am I right? Yes. And you set up this legal outsourcing business. Yeah. yeah. And you started off with just three people in a library and now yeah. you've scaled up in three years to 70 employees in Sri Lanka and then 30 in London. Isn't it? Correct, yeah. Adam, tell us your background. Okay, so uh, I'm obviously from England, from the countryside in England. Uh, I'm the youngest of five. Um, and I had a front row seat uh, watching my father scale uh, an insurance claims management business. Um, and that was fundamental to me in terms of inspiring me to want to do something similar. Um, I then studied economics at Durham um, and I was surrounded by lawyers there much like I'm surrounded by lawyers now. Uh, after my degree, I then went uh, to London, uh, worked in a strategy consultancy. So I worked on mergers and acquisitions and uh, strategic plans for businesses of all sizes. Uh, then after moving to Sri Lanka with my then future wife, I uh, worked at MAS Holdings in Innovation. And there I was really privileged to gain exposure to a number of areas such as uh, become the menopausal brand that, that we have scaled and recently partnered off, uh, experiencing different business models through the innovation investments that MAS bravely made all those years ago. Great. So tell us about this business of yours, which I believe is different in Sri Lanka. And it's also more different because you are recruiting people and you are scaling up this year. Exactly. Um, so Move is uh, or Move Colombo is the uh, Sri Lankan office of a conveyancing company in London called Move. Um, and we're digitally focused and customer focused. Um, so the difference between us and a normal law firm is that one, we are focused on customer centricity. The customer is at the heart of everything we do. Two, we have a fast and transparent transaction process. And three, we have effectively moved front-facing roles uh, abroad and to Sri Lanka. Right. Okay. So tell us, what exactly do you do if you do get a case mm -hmm. in England? Yeah. How do you do it? Well, yeah. Do so, it? I think a good place to start is what is conveyancing. So it's the same as in Sri Lanka. It's the transfer of title of a property from buyer, uh, from seller to buyer, mm -hmm. um, and there are various parts of conveyancing in the UK that is a lot simpler than in Sri Lanka. So everything is online and it's digitized and we don't need to go to uh, municipal councils to uh, check on titles or deeds. However, there are a lot more complexities too. In the UK, we have a lot more regulation um, and there are also many types of contract as well. So we have freehold properties and leasehold properties. And we have a lot more in the way of stakeholders right. in the relationship. Um, but what we fundamentally do is we win work through our UK office. Uh, the, the sales and marketing function is there from a variety of channels through partnerships with estate agents to uh, price comparison websites and, and direct customer as well. Uh, for the most part, that work now comes to Sri Lanka and is, is service from the functions that we've built out in Sri Lanka. Um, so we've approached conveyancing in the same way that our apparel super giants have approached uh, apparel manufacturing. It's, I think an analogy is you can go to a tailor and you can have the tailor and his assistant make you a suit. Sure. Or you can uh, buy an off-the-shelf product that's manufactured a lot of it here in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. and is uh, say a 10 to 30 uh, roll job. And you really specialize in what people are really good at. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have done the same thing. Uh, within our office in Sri Lanka, we have a number of functions. We have a processing team who handles documentation. We've got an account management team that handles that relationship over the 12-week process with our customers. We have the conveyances who really focus on the legal element of the job. And then we also have uh, financial processing, uh, registration after the transaction, and customer service. Fantastic. So tell us, what made you start this outfit in Sri Lanka? So I think a lot of this comes back to when I moved to Sri Lanka, 
Uh, I moved here because of my future wife at the time. And very quickly, I saw a massive opportunity to, to create businesses that make a difference and create high value jobs in Sri Lanka. Um, so that was, that was at the heart of what I wanted to do when I moved here. And I'm in a fortunate position that I have the ability to bring work to Sri Lanka. Um, so when we started MOVE, uh, myself and Rashani, who is my co-founder in Sri Lanka, and MOVE as well, we had three principles that we wanted to uphold the whole time. So those principles are that we are going to create high value addition roles um, that are well paying and internationally exposed. We are going to not hide what we're doing. We're not shy of the fact that we have very, very qualified um, people in Sri Lanka. We have LLB graduates, business graduates, attorneys who are doing the work. They are as qualified, if not more so, than mm -hmm. our UK counterparts. Right. And we wanted a terrific culture mm -hmm. uh, with best-in-class HR practices. Um, and, and all of those were inspired by the, the exposure that I've had both in, in the UK, in strategy consulting, uh, but also working at MAS Holdings, who are one of the best employers, if not the best in the country, and really pushing the boundary of of what it means to, to have partners in your business. Excellent. Okay, so what potential do you see that lie in Sri Lanka? So for me, it's not uh, going to be that Sri Lanka should be a service hub and it's not that we should be a manufacturing hub. Sure. What we should focus on is being a partner to whoever we're working with internationally. So from our perspective, it means we absorb more of the value chain to Sri Lanka uh, and we take those front, front office roles too. But also in manufacturing, as MAS, Brandix, Hydromani have all showed, to go uh, backwards and forwards in the supply chain, to uh, manufacture raw materials, to design products, um, to handle inventory planning, to handle logistics. So you are not just a transactional uh, company or country that you're a partner to all of these businesses that you really work with. Fantastic. You said something before, you said that um, Sri Lankans are competent, if not even more so than, than the counterparts Definitely. in uh, England. Could you elaborate a little bit? Yes. So we've got, we have a vast talent pool in Sri Lanka. Uh, we have an education focus within the country. Everybody wants their degrees, their LLBs, their MBAs, and that is yes. only a good thing. Um, so that, that is a brilliant uh, backbone of the education side. Then there's obviously the English proficiency. Uh, if you look at countries within the region, there are very few that have English as one of their main languages as we, as we do in Sri Lanka. Oh, so, wow. so Sri Lankans would be, in your view, um, so I think if you reflect on when people leave the country after having come here on holidays, universally people say that Sri Lankans are warm and friendly. And that at the heart of it is exactly what we as a business, as a service industry needs when you're in these front facing roles, uh, to be able to relate to the customer and, and regardless of what the process you're doing with them is, make them feel valued. Absolutely. So what do you see as a challenge going forward for um, yourself? So, so I think, for us moving forward, we need to continue the work that we've done in, yeah. in creating an alternative to the traditional career paths within each industry. So if you focus on the legal industry, there are right now there are three options for an LLB or an attorney's graduate. You've got going into the courts, you've got going into a corporate mm -hmm. within uh, say legal department or counsel, sure. or your third option is to just move away from the law completely and into business. Yes. What we at MOVE want to do is create a fourth option, which is coming into a law firm operating internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we really are looking for and what we need is driven, intelligent people who are able to relate to customers and communicate terrifically and want a challenging and internationally exposed role. Well, one question I have for you is, if there's a graduate here, a graduate of law here in Sri Lanka, mm. could they uh, 
look at legal documentations in England because the law would be completely different. So do they have to study extra? Do you give, coach them up? Yeah. So there, there are the two routes. If you've got an LLB um, background and you have studied English law, that is the, the prerequisite. Uh, and if you have uh, not done English law, then we will train you, coach you, and get you up to the, the point required for us uh, within conveyancing. Okay, fantastic. So what is your vision for MOVE? So uh, MOVE recently gained funding of about $1.5 million. Uh, so we're very committed to the, the plan that we have going forward. We want to be one of the top five conveyances in the UK uh, in the next five years. So this is a $2 billion industry. So uh, conveyancing in the UK is a four billion pound industry. Uh, and we feel that a business such as ours with the process and technology we've laid in place is able to really scale. So really fundamentally, by the end of next year, we want to be at 150 people in, in Sri Lanka uh, and in the next five years at 400 people. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Adam for joining us today and Thank telling you. us about MOVE. It is very inspirational, really, because in today's context, companies aren't recruiting, they are holding back, but in your case, it's different. Maybe. You are actually recruiting. Yes, and recruiting very hard right now. All right, so all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to the venue partner, the Hilton Colombo. See you again next time.